Hello, everyone, and welcome. <laughs> How are you doing today? Welcome to our live q and I'm John Gary, and we are here on the set of JohnGaryTV.com uh, at our studio. And I want to say first hello to our live YouTube viewers and uh, our also our live um, viewers from JohnGaryTV.com. If you're on the JG uh, live page, you're watching us there as well. So anyway, um, this is our second show, and uh, we've got some. La last week went great, so every Thursday at one o'clock we're going to be live, and uh, we we had just a fantastic time last week. I want to thank everybody for tuning in and also for giving us some really great uh, questions and comments, and I'm going to address a lot of those today. We're also going to be addressing your live questions and comments. So um, if you're on our website, just sign into the chat and say hello. Adam and Mike are standing by and they're monitoring the chat while I talk to you. Um, and uh, we've got some really cool things for you today. If you're on YouTube, we're also monitoring that as well. So you can put your, there's a chat window there. And uh, so you can, you can put your questions and comments there as well, because we'd like to hear from you. Um, one of the things we found out last week, we made our first boo-boo. Uh, we, first of many, I'm sure, but uh, like today when I, when I didn't have my sound turned off on my, on my laptop and it just blasted me out of the room. Um, yeah, that was smooth. Uh, anyway, so uh, last week we got some questions and comments in the chat section, not, not in the comment section below, but during the live broadcast. And there were some really great, great questions. Unfortunately, we didn't know that after the live segment is over, that chat window disappears and you cannot see it. So we didn't have a chance to uh, write those down before that happened. We're ready for it this week. We're going to do a screenshot of it. But um, I'm really sorry if you asked a question last week and I promised you that I'd get back to you this week about it because I don't remember what it is. So if you'll put it down again, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll uh, put it back in the queue and we'll try to get to it next week. All right, so, uh, so we've solved that issue and, and so we're gonna be moving on today with some really fun stuff. So the first thing I wanna do, um, later on I'm gonna be introducing actually a brand new segment. You know, we've been on the air for two weeks, so we have a brand new segment that I'm gonna be in introducing next week and it is called questions that I'm going to ask someone else to answer. Um, <laughs> so I knew this was going to happen right after the show last week. We got some, some questions that are in the, we'll call them the injuries and special populations category. And uh, although I, I can answer those, obviously I'm fully certified. I've done a lot of research on stuff. It's not, that's not my wheelhouse. You know, my main focus is really uh, bringing the worlds of fitness and Pilates together. And so um, that's, that's my primary focus with programming. That's what I love to do. That's what I'm passionate about. And, um, but I have a lot of friends. And one of my really good friends is Melanie Byford Young. And she is a um, master trainer for Stop Pilates for the Injuries and Special Population for the rehab program. And um, so I talked to her last week and she has agreed to be our new, get ready for this, special populations correspondent. So a little bit later in the show, uh, we, we're gonna be having her answer a question from uh, Todd, one of our, one of our uh, viewers from last week. And I'm super excited that she's gonna be joining our team. And um, we'll put up a bunch of information about her, but she, she was down here, she teaches for us. Uh, uh, usually at least once a year, she comes down and does workshops for um, instructors and stuff at our studio. Um, and as I said, she's from Pacific Northwest Pilates in uh, Portland, Oregon. So if you're up there or if you really want to train with somebody that knows their stuff, she is the person. And we're going to put all of her contact information um, and a link to the interview that I did with her on the John Gary show um, in, the, in the show notes underneath, in the description underneath after the show and in my blog post. So if you have a chance, go check out that interview because she is uh, she's super fun. And uh, her whole autobiography is on that page as well. We'll get to her segment a little bit later in the show. Um, but I want to talk a, a little bit. I want to recap what happened this past week on John Gary TV. So the first thing is that on Monday we released a new reformer workout. And it was beginner reformer workout for men. Now I say for men, but it's really for anybody who has 
um, things that we traditionally see in men, which are tight hips, tight low back, lack of flexibility in, in general. Um, sometimes a weaker core goes along with that. Um, and of course, this fits many, many people many, many people, meaning women and men, but um, the focus was really, we see this with a lot of guys, so I wanted to do a workout that specifically addressed that, especially for beginner clients. There's some really fun regressions in there, so be sure you go to our, um, our library, which is under the video section in the navigation bar, and check out that workout, and of course the notes are with it as well. On Wednesday, we did an express intermediate level mat class. And one of the things that I, I love doing is kind of coming up with new programming uh, and adding it, to, adding it to things that we already are familiar with. And uh, this week I did that with a couple of exercises where I combined two traditional exercises to make uh, a really fun new variation. And so you'll see a couple of those in there. And that brings me to my next uh, thing that I want to talk about. We have released this week, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, or, or um, maybe today, I can't remember, but we had three new exercise demos at all. But one, of them was, uh, one of them was Pilates push-up with toe tap. Uh, the other one was single leg work regression on the reformer. And then I think it was just today, uh, we put out leg pull front push-up combo, which is a really fun one as well. So go check those out. Uh, we have over 750 um, uh, exercise demos, so single exercise clips that you can, you can check out. All right, so on to our comments and questions that we received this past week. Now, I'm not gonna be able to get to all the comments and questions, but um, what I wanna do is kind of pick uh, a, a variety of them, and some of them actually have the same information or the same question. Uh, so I try, uh, if, especially if I get a number of the same question, I'm gonna try to answer just at least one of them. So our first one uh, comes from, it's a comment slash question, uh, and it was after our, she, um, Leah from Chelmsford, England, watched our first podcast and then uh, you know all of our podcasts they'll stay on YouTube um, so you can view them but also if you're a subscriber I write a blog about them and then I put them in my blog I put the podcast in my blog so you can check it out um, and and watch it anytime after the live broadcast and so Leah did and Leah uh, left a comment that I was able to answer her but I also want to read it to you because uh, it's a really good question, and I think it addresses something that a lot of people have asked me in the past. So here it is from Leah. What a fantastic first podcast. I really enjoyed watching it. Thank you. I have a question. I certified in my Stop Pilates mat work about six months ago. I didn't think I was ever going to be able to achieve it, but I finally did it. I have been a subscriber to your channel for about two or three months now, and for me, it is absolutely invaluable as a tool to help me become a better and more confident Pilates teacher. I love the way I can choose different types of exercises to add variation and challenge into my group classes. However, I am afraid that as a Stop Pilates certified instructor, I shouldn't be teaching any other type of exercise, for example, your ranch mat series or any Pilates inspired workouts, as I haven't attended an actual course on these specifically. Am I being overcautious here or is it perfectly fine for me to teach various Pilates slash fitness uh, using programs using my Stop Pilates certification? I hope this makes sense and I can't wait to watch the next podcast. So first of all, thank you so much for watching it and for commenting and congratulations on becoming certified. I think it's so important to finish that process, not just get trained, but to get certified because that tells you and everybody who hires you and trains with you that you have a certain base, le no, uh, base of knowledge and that is what's so important. And the fact that I know that you certified through the Stop Pilates program tells me my answer, which is absolutely yes. I know because obviously um, I'm a master trainer for Stop Pilates and our studio is a licensed training center for Stop Pilates. I know what that test entails um, and it is quite vigorous. You've done a lot of studying and you've worked really hard and you've learned a lot of really important information um, along with all of the Pilates repertoire, uh, the mat re repertoire for you, in your case. And so what, what I think is that once you have that knowledge, and, and I've talked to a lot of um, 
a, a lot of different master trainers about this. Once you have that base level of knowledge, then once you work with it for a while and you, and it sounds like you did a lot of work with it and you're comfortable with it. Yes. I want, you should go out and you should expand and add variety uh, um, to what you teach. And it doesn't mean to let go of what you learned and not teach what you learned because it's super important. I really believe in teaching your clients the basics and going back to the basics. But it's also really good for you as a trainer and really good for your clients to get stretched. So if you are comfortable with the information that you got and you feel confident that you understand what the exercise is for, who it's for, and how it should be taught, then absolutely add it to your repertoire. I really think it's a great thing to do. I think it's, it's what we should be doing. We should be stretching ourselves. So yes, now, that being said, if it's something that's out of your wheelhouse and you are just not comfortable teaching it, then no, it's not a good idea to teach something that maybe you don't feel really comfortable with or that you feel that you personally need more behind you. So um, in order to teach that. But if it's something you like, what you've done is you've told yourself, is you've just basically told yourself, okay, I need to go find out more about this because I like the way this goes. Um, and as always, if you have specific questions about programs or exercises that I'm showing you on John Gary TV, by all means, ask me, send me a question, write a comment, um, and I'll do my best to clarify it. So that goes for everyone. I hope that's a good answer. Uh, one of the things you can do is check out the education, the educate yourself page on John Gary TV. And I actually have a whole list there of my favorite certifications, uh, certification programs and where you can get continuing education. One of those places is at our studio this year. We're doing four weekend conferences where we, uh, we have our uh, instructor trainers teaching, but we also bring in uh, master trainers and lead instructor trainers uh, from around the world. So you can come in and, and see those and check that out. It's all on our on our Educate Yourself page, uh, what's coming up this year. So that was a great question and comment, and thank you so much again, Leah. Okay, so the next one uh, comes from Joe Williams. And I don't know, those of you who are on John Gary TV may remember Joe Williams uh, is was one of our instructors at John Gary Fitness and Pilates. And uh, in this, during this past summer, he, after working for us for like eight years, um, decided that he needed to move to Vegas. And he moved to Vegas and he's been working and teaching there, but we've stayed in touch. He's done a couple of uh, shows for us on the John Gary Show. He's also been in a couple of our workout videos. Um, and he sent me a few questions that he wanted me to answer. And I wanna address those because it actually leads me to, uh, uh, to something that's, that's going on pretty soon. So um, anyway. The question from Joe in Las Vegas is, what was the hardest week leading up to your physique competition and are you planning on doing another one? So first of all, for those of you who don't know, last year uh, at the age of, of uh, I don't know, how old was I? 54, <laughs> I'm 55 now I think, yeah. Um, I wanted to do something, I really wanted to stretch myself, I wanted to challenge myself and I'd, I had done a uh, men's physique competition really 25 years ago at least. Um, just one time, and um, and I, I just have always thought about doing another one, and one of the reasons I wanted to do it was because I knew it would motivate me to kind of, I was ready to actually take my body to the next level and kind of push the limits and see what I could achieve. So last spring, I signed up for uh, a, a competition that was in Las Vegas in, um, in November, and so then I did my, it, was, it ended up being almost nine months of, of preparation for that. And then in November, I went into the competition. So for Joe's um, first part of it, what was the toughest week? Really the toughest week for me was the last week. And you probably, if you know people who compete in bodybuilding or physique competitions, that's usually a common answer because the last week for most people is really, really cutting your diet big time and dehydration and a lot of really kind of what I consider to be unhealthy things. So I wasn't looking forward to that and I actually didn't even do it. Because the reason it was the hardest thing week for me was because right a week before the competition, I hit all of the goals that I had set out for myself to hit. So my whole thing about doing that competition was to achieve certain goals that I set out. So one of them was to be under 10% body fat. 
check mark. I did it. One of them was to get a, a certain amount of measurements, uh, body measurements, and to gain inches places and lose in inches places. Check mark. I did it. So I really did all the prep to clean up my diet completely. Check mark. I did it. So I, you know, didn't really even want to do the show. <laughs> Actually, I was like, do I really want to do this? But I had committed to it and I, I knew it was going to, it's like taking your certification exam, right? You did, you did all the preparation for it. Why would you not take it? So, um, I did the show. I'm glad I did it. It, it is tough. And you know, I didn't place in the show. It was the, the, my category was just ridiculously big with really amazing looking people. Um, and I didn't go in with an expectation to win. And so one of the things I learned about myself was that I always thought I was such a competitive person. And I thought going in there, I was going to have this major like, oh, I have to win. And it wasn't like that at all for me. I was really appreciative of what all the work I could see that everybody else had done. And um, I was just ready to go on vacation, which we had planned for right after that. So it, was, it ended up being a really good experience, experience for me. And I'm really glad I did it. Now, the second part of Joe's question was, are, am I planning to do another one? So right after the show, I have to say the answer would have been absolutely not. I do not want to do another one. But as these things go, as a couple months have gone, I really started thinking, you know, I probably could have looked better. And I probably could have gone a little further. And I probably could have done a little better in the competition had I given myself more time or whatever. So, yes, I am doing another competition. So I'm announcing that today. Um, I'm going to do, it's called the NPC uh, West Coast Classic, and it's in Riverside, California, right outside of LA, and it's June 17th. So you will be seeing, uh, starting this week actually, uh, the beginning of my preparation for that. So it's about six months away. So I am going to spend the next six months preparing for that as I did for the last one, but I'm doing some things differently. And one of the things I'm doing differently is my own personal workout routine. So I recently, and by the way, thanks Joe for the question, I really appreciate it. Um, I recently uh, actually started a brand new workout routine and I am going to be sharing that with our um, John Gary TV subscribers. We're, it's part of our, we do fitness videos every week. So these are gonna be my fitness videos for the next five weeks. Each week I'm gonna show you one day of my training program and I'm using for my training program a method, uh, it's very scientifically sound. Uh, it's a guy who I follow on, on YouTube and I've read his books and he's really, really smart. And his name is Mike Matthews and his book is Bigger, Leaner, Stronger. Did I get that right, Adam? Yeah, Bigger, Leaner, Stronger. And um, I always mix up those words or add, <laughs> add in new words, but it's a really good book. Um, and I think Adam's showing it to you on the screen right now. And so that's the program that I'm doing, but I'm gonna show you uh, the exercises that I do for each of the five days. I'm doing the five day plan uh, for each of those days. And uh, I'll be breaking down the form and execution of those and talking about uh, how, you know, for me, for what I'm doing, um, how many reps I'm doing, how many sets I'm doing, what my recovery is. Uh, and that'll be part of this program you'll see uh, I still haven't found a name for the program for this. The, my, the one that I did for Vegas was called The Road to Vegas. So I'll take suggestions if you have suggestions for what you think the name of the program should be. Um, I'm happy to, to name it. Uh, maybe we should have a little competition, Adam. I don't know, but that, that sure. might be a good idea. Let's start a competition. Sure. <laughs> I don't know what the prize will be, but you know. We'll come up with something cool. All right, anyway, or I'll just come up with the name myself if nobody cares. <laughs> I'll just come up with the name. All right, so that's going on. You're going to see a lot about that, and uh, we'll be adding some stuff to that uh, as, we, as we go through. So that's, that's pretty fun. Okay, so let's go through. I did that one. Um, we talked about all of that. Perfect. Okay, so our next um, comment and suggestion comes from Allison from Connecticut. And Allison and her partner own a uh, studio there. And uh, so let me, read, let me read part of what she said here. Hi, John, I've been following your service for a while and had been meaning to join. I think it is excellent. My business partner and I own a studio in Connecticut. And we took some classes with you years ago at ECA, which is a conference, in New York City. Though we are not Stop Pilates trainers, really more an eclectic mix. We did our initial training through Physical Mind in the early 1990s with an instructor who was trained by Romana, 
who I don't know if you know, but Romana is one of the elders and she owned the studio in New York after Joe. So um, we, we uh, come from a fitness world. Yes. <laughs> and find that your approach aligns well with ours. Thank you. Uh, we also teach TRX and strength training at our studio, which is a women only studio. A big we reason we joined for your service is that we are always looking for new ideas and new variations for both equipment and mat. Since we have all the equipment in our studio plus more, we would love to see you add more workouts and exercise demos for Cadillac, not the tower, and the regular chair or the X XO or Wunda chair and the ladder barrel. Thank you for asking, um, uh, and I'll explain that in a second, for starting your service and for having a sane approach to Pilates. All right, Allison, thank you very much, and uh, best wishes to you and your uh, business partner. I know you guys are going to be super successful because fitness and Pilates go hand in hand. It's such a great combination. You know that already, though. Um, so a couple of things here. We, uh, on Mondays, we do our, what we call Reformer Plus Mondays. So sometimes I do Reformer workouts, I've done chair workouts, I've done tower workouts, so absolutely I'm happy to do more chair workouts and exercise demos on the chair. I'll, I'm gonna put that on the list. And, uh, and but at our, we're in a, our production studio, not our actual physical studio where we train clients. Uh, that's in another area of Long Beach. And so, what we don't have up here is a ladder barrel or a Cadillac. And I have brought the ladder barrel up here for some, from, for some um, vi video taking. And I, I have actually been looking into getting a Cadillac up here. <laughs> we're gonna have to build a new space to put all of this equipment in, but um, we're, gonna, we're gonna see about adding that. And if we don't end up adding it, we'll probably shoot our videos um, on the Cadillac down at our other studio. It's just a little tricky because it's a very busy studio. but. We will work on that. I really appreciate your comment and um, we're gonna put that on the list for sure. I love multiple equipment stuff and we'll keep adding all of the fitness stuff as well for you guys. All right, the next comment uh, comes from, and I just wanted to include this, I think it's really cool. Sharon um, said, I actually signed up uh, for John Gary TV to get myself on the reformer to get in shape so I can be a better instructor. It's not." easy to get others working and skip yourself, and it's nice to have the instruction. P.S. Love your dog. Well, Bam Bam and Rocco, thank you, and I thank you. And I think that's absolutely incredible. It's so hard to get your own workout in. I get up just before 4 a.m. every morning so I can get my workout in. It is, you know, if you saw last week's podcast, I talked about the one thing. And for me, the one thing is making sure that I am doing everything I can to give you the absolute best on John Gary TV and one of those things is making sure that I am staying in shape and I am working hard on my own body as I want you all to as well. So I think it's awesome. I'm really glad that you're using it for that and we have over a hundred workouts for you to choose from and we, are, we add more every week. So continue on and thank you so much for that. Next, Brenda. Brenda said, I'm a Stop Pilates certified instructor. She studied with Dave Brecker. Shout out to Dave, who is up in Sacramento. Awesome guy. Um, and he has a licensed training center up there. And I used to attend your CEC workshops in the Sacramento area. That's why I was very happy to come across your YouTube video of a great reformer workout, which led me to John Gary TV. We do have a couple of uh, workouts that we ha that we do have full workouts on YouTube, and that's great that that um, she saw that and then came to John Gary TV. I'm really super excited about that. I no longer teach and now live in an area that lacks a good Pilates studio, so I depend on at home reformer and mat workouts. Becoming part of your audience is allowing me to reconnect with my love of Pilates and continue to advance my practice and repertoire. Well, thank you so much. I really appreciate that, Brenda. And you are why, one of the very, very reasons why I wanted to start John Gary TV. I really wanted to be able to provide, um, you know, a, an, a, virtual license, a virtual training center, Pilates and Fitness Training Center, for people all over the world, wherever you are, so that you have a place to go and not only get uh, training as an instructor, but get workouts for yourself and to make your life easier. And that, that's really what we wanted to do. We do everything we can um, to help you and help you become the best instructor that you can actually become. So um, we are we, uh, we're 
continuing to add workouts every week. We have our live Monday and live Wednesday, Wednesday workouts. We provide notes with those and we put thumbnail pictures on those. I got some comments about that this week that people take those in and they actually look right at those thumbnail pictures. It's a really good quick reference. They review the notes before they go in and they're ready to teach and that's why we do this. So thank you so much for that. I really appreciate it. Okay. Picture time. Picture time. Picture time. Oh yeah, okay. So. Hold on, we're gonna take a quick picture. It's gonna look like we're taking a picture and I'll explain it in a minute. <laughs> okay, that may, might have to be our thumbnail picture. All right, are we good to go again? Okay, so here's what happens. We, we are, so that means I've been talking a long time. We are, uh, we have a camera going and what happens is uh, we're, we're only using one camera for this. So it, in, it takes about 30 minutes, I think, or close to 30 minutes the camera will shut off automatically. So Adam, as well as doing everything else, keeps the timer going so he knows when that is gonna happen. And all we have to do then is just restart the camera, but it looks like we're taking a picture. So that's what he just did. And now uh, we can continue on. So sorry about that, but um, that's the uh, live uh, TV thing that, that happens. Okay, the next question actually came from a YouTube viewer. And uh, thank you for watching on YouTube. I really appreciate it. Todd Getz has a had a question. He actually had a couple comments too, but here's the question that he had. So uh, it's related to piriformis syndrome. Wondering if you can describe and give recommended mat work exercises for strengthening and lengthening, as well as contraindications, if any. I know that's kind of a loaded question with probably no real short answer. Yes, <laughs> I can give you that answer. And yes, it's a loaded question and there's really no short answer. Adam just did a spit take. <laughs> anyway, so this is why I started our new segment, questions I'm gonna ask somebody else to answer. Uh, because uh, I, you know, we all work with clients and individuals with uh, injuries uh, or that are part of a special population. They have uh, issues that are not are not you know go going into the apparently healthy um, client, but what I want to do with this is make sure that I'm giving you the best information I can give you, and the best way for me to do that is to use our special populations correspondent, Melanie Byford Young. Now, Melanie from Pacific Northwest Pilates in Portland, Oregon, uh, Portland, Oregon. I want to say that right. Uh, is was really happy to tackle it. Actually, too excited to, <laughs> to tackle it. So um, we're really happy to have her, and we're gonna cut to her right now, and you're gonna see the video with her, and um, it's dense. So you watch it now, and remember, it's being recorded, and you will be able to watch it again and again. And by dense, I mean that it is loaded with information, really awesome information. So take some time right now to watch it, and remember, you can watch it again and again. And I'll be back when it's over. See you soon. Hello, John and everybody on John Gary TV. Thank you so much for inviting me today. I'm Melanie Byford Young, and I'm happy to be here and contributing to that knowledge base and understanding of all of our movement professionals out there. So today's question came from Todd Getz, and it was related to piriformis syndrome. But before we get into the meat and potatoes, we have to do the disclaimer. There are hundreds of reasons why somebody would end up with a history of or an active piriformis syndrome. So please, depending on what your background is and your experience, work with other healthcare professionals professionals to understand exactly what is going on. And if anything isn't going according to the plan, please get some help. So Todd's question in specific was, can you please describe what causes piriformis syndrome? Can you give us some exercises to strengthen and or stretch the piriformis? And what are some big contraindications? So great question. And um, as always, what I want to do is just again, start a little bit with the anatomy and function. So we know that piriformis is one of the inner core unit muscles. It's a stabilizer muscle and it runs, it's just a little triangle. So it runs from the underside of the sacrum from S2, 3, and 4 through the pelvis and inserts onto the greater trochanter. And of course, it's a very small muscle in and of itself. There's a left and a right that is fascially blended, so essentially connecting the uh, right hip through the sacrum directly to the left. And it works with all of the other deep six. So one of the small precision muscles as opposed to a power muscle. Um, we know that it gets its innervation right down from L4-5, the lower part of the spine, and that the sciatic nerve either runs over, under, or through that muscle. So it is designed for 
a lot of different things. Its primary goal is uh, dynamic stability, which means positioning the hip and the sacrum in relationship to each other, managing forces that come down through the body, through the pelvis, and or up from the leg to the pelvis. And it's linking the sacrum, in other words, this whole lower spine, in through the hip and managing and dynamically adjusting. Yes, it does also do some concentric motion, which is either the right piriformis will rotate the right hip laterally, and or it'll rotate the sacrum, or contribute to rotating the sacrum to the left. And then eccentrically, it is managing all of our flexion forces, our rotation forces, and then also, of course, a presetting stabilization. What is piriformis syndrome? All that means is that some, the piriformis is angry. You've misused it, you've misloaded it, you've used it for the wrong thing, and or there was an accident that led to its dysfunction, falling on it, shearing, doing something through the sacrum. So I said there's a lot of causes, and in particular, it's that misloading that we have to really look at. So if the rib cage is shifted way over to the side, that is going to change the demands uh, that are coming down through the pelvis and to the piriformis specifically. So any rib cage shift, any rib cage rotation, pelvic shift, pelvic rotation, um, dysfunction in the feet, lack of shock absorption and mobility, that will cause a huge problem with that piriformis. So just because it's angry doesn't mean that it's the local problem. It means that it's responding, it's been misused and misloaded. Um, so as I said, classic things are posture, how you are loading it, um, our muscle habits, what are we doing? Do you tuck your bum? Do you squeeze your bum cheeks? Are you um, always gripping with your feet? Are you always gripping with your obliques? Then of course there could be a nerve habit, so we know that it is innervated by the low lumbar nerves, if you want to call it that, L4, 5, S1. So are you doing something in that low sacrum, low back to irritate the nerve that goes to it, or that piriformis that goes all the way from the lumbar spine all the way down to the bottom of the foot, essentially? Okay, and again, you'll hear me say feet, 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 feet. So if you're not shock absorbing and dynamically working through your feet, that can cause consequence up the chain. So when you're looking at what are our goals for helping somebody who has had piriformis syndrome and or is touchy with it, our goals of course are to realign posture so that we're loading that muscle as optimally as possible. We need to let it settle down. We need to stop misusing it, stop misloading it. So that comes to a whole lot of different goals that we'll talk about in a second. We want to get rid of all the contributing factors, whether that's thoracic mobility, placement, how you use your lats, uh, shifting your hip to one side because of your job or carrying children. Um, we want to restore local control and precision control in particular. And then we want to integrate all of that up into bigger dynamic movements and uh, the global challenging it. And it's working with the uh, glutes and with the hamstrings and all the other muscles. So you asked me specifically, so you've cleared this person of any other wrongdoing, you're allowed to go ahead with starting to do some exercises. The first thing we're gonna look at is posture. How do we start loading it properly? So that might be some of our warm-up exercises like uh, arm movements, arms overhead, arm circles, arm scissors, definitely spinal rotation, so lower load thoracic ro uh, rotation back and forth, and some of our mermaid. So start lining up the big chunks essentially and allow the big muscles like obliques and glutes to be able to fire and function. When we're looking at pelvic control, we want to restore both ease and movement and symmetry through the pelvis. So things like cat are a great place when you're rounding up, making sure they're not squeezing their bum too much and as they restore back to neutral and then possibly into extension, that you're really doing it with an easy movement. You're not gripping, binding or shifting. Um, I always take that into a four-point rock back where you're on your hands and knees and then your flat spine goes back and forth. Um, so you're opening up the back of the hip socket, folding in the hips, um, helping to restore the psoas and the piriformis together. Um, that could go into any of our basic, basic swimming preps where you're lifting one hand or the puppies in the snow, you may know them by. Then, of course, we've got leg slide. And um, things, another great idea is doing some standing pivot work. We have to get everybody into every position, sitting, standing, quadruped. So first of all, offloading it and then starting to reintegrate it and slowly, slowly getting all the pieces together. Um, when we're looking at, so that's our pelvic control. 
And then um, we're looking at our hip and pelvis. So it might be things like leg slide, leg circles, one leg circle, and you'll have to decide. Often I use a flex band so that either to compress straight down through the leg or behind the leg to offload the weight of it, um, depending on what's going on and their mobility and their control. You would definitely progress into things like shoulder bridge, just the very basic. You don't have to lift up very high, just learning how to control and start lifting the pelvis. So using obliques well, using your hamstrings, your feet, your hips. Again, getting into some standing work, some you have to restore the squat. And I'm not talking about a heavy, heavy loaded squat. I'm just talking about that motion, being able to fold in the hips and keep your spine in a good place. And then um, an associated exercise to that for the restoring a squat is a leg pull front prep. Lots of ideas, but we're not done. So uh, when you're looking at uh, progressing on saying, all right, I want to work it harder, um, you're not working just pure form as harder. That's the big thing. Again, it's a contributing muscle. It's a defining and refining muscle. The big power comes from our big power muscles, like the glutes, like the, the quads, the hamstrings, um, the calf muscles, the obliques. So things like pr bridge progressions. Okay, Once you've got just that lifting and the folding back down, getting the big guys to do the work, the little guys to do the precision, then you're really going to be looking at um, progressing to the marching phases and the full exercise and then lifting the pelvis on, lowering it down single leg. Um, Sideline circles, you might say, why didn't that come in earlier? If your piriformis is quite angry, uh, side leg lifts and side leg, leg circles are actually very challenging for it. So you might have to start out with the band or the springs and then progress to being able to manage lots of repetitions and variations um, with the side kicks and side leg lift series. Um, kneeling lunge position, doing squats in the hundred, all of those would be big progressions on top. So the most important thing is the contraindications and when to do what. So big thing, when a nerve or a muscle is really angry, don't pull on it. So that idea of if piriformis is angry, do a stretch, I'd go 100% the opposite way. If piriformis is angry, there's a reason for it. And again, it's so intimately related to the sciatic nerve that you don't want to be pulling on it. So think about offloading it first. Think about letting it downregulate, turn off, get less sensitive. Think about offloading it, getting the thoracic spine to be working better, the glutes to be working better. So maybe even something like a very gentle heel squeeze prone. Might be easy, might be hard. If there's an adverse reaction, if it doesn't seem quite right, stop, get help. So um, I think that's the second point is contraindications. Don't pull, don't think about stretching. Don't think about piriformis as a power muscle doing lots of external rotations, um, but also don't avoid it. We have to restore great dynamic movement. So I wouldn't go to a heavy clamshell at all. Absolutely not early on. If there's any sort of sensitivity in the muscle, eventually um, that might be a good muscle, a good exercise, but you're going to have to go up there very slowly. So, all the best. I warned you. <laughs> Thank you, Melanie. Okay, she's pretty super smart, huh? Um, now, keep in mind, and you can go and read uh, Melanie's bio on um, our uh, John Gary show. She was in. She was on season two. And you can check out her her uh, interview and also her bio to see what her credentials are, which are many. But she is a movement therapist. She's a movement specialist, so she has all of that information. That's why I really, really wanted to make sure that we were um, using using her um, and inviting her to answer these questions. Uh, so, in a nutshell, piriformis syndrome, get help. <laughs> Uh, no, once you know what to do, uh, once you understand the issue and you know uh, what you're able to do and not able to do with someone, um, there's some pretty cool stuff you can do with, with your clients. Um, but as she said in the disclaimer, make sure that if you're, if, if you, you know, there's hundreds of reasons for these things and especially in that area of the body. So make sure you're um, getting the help you need from medical professionals um, to, to, really address the situation and work with your clients in the best way possible. Okay, so I wanna address a couple of the comments that we got uh, so far in the show. Annette, I wanna say thank you and hello watching on YouTube and shout out to Yosef. Uh, that's what he wanted, so that's what he got. 
<laughs> All right, and Alessandro from John, on the John Gary TV site, thank you so much for joining us there and uh, thanks for tuning in. You had a question as well about nutrition and what I want to do is make sure I, I talk about this because, you know, what I do for my nutrition, and I am definitely going to talk about that um, on, on episodes for uh, when, we're t when we're talking about my new program, my new um, um, quest for for going to my show in, in June. Uh, I will definitely be talking about nutrition. I'm going to be showing what I'm eating, and I'm going to be talking about the guidelines that I'm using for myself. So I am not a registered dietitian or really a, nu a nutritionist. I know basic information, um, as probably most fitness and uh, Pilates people know. So I'll be giving you guidelines, um, but always make sure that you're working with somebody who can work specifically with you on what your goals are. Um, so mine are all set for me based on my body weight, my goals, uh, my metabolism, all of that stuff. Anyway, so I'll be talking about that as well. And I think that does it. I think that wraps it up for us. Let me just check here. Yeah, I think that wraps it up for us for this show. And again, I would love to hear your questions. I would love to read your comments. Um, it's really a, a kick for me to do that. And I love reaching people all over the world. It's a hoot. And um, I'm, I'm really, really thankful that you are following us. And I want to thank Adam. He's doing a great job. He just does so many amazing things for us. So tomorrow on our website, check out, uh, it'll be posted probably first thing in the morning, our fitness workout, which is my new workout program day one, which is chest day. <laughs> All right, so check that out. And bye, everybody. This was super fun. I'll see you next time.